Good afternoon. This part of the cholesterol series will cover trans fats, what do they do, functions of all those crazy little names, LDL, VLDL, HDL, and clotted arteries. How do I get them? What, what happens in my body to create them? And what do we do about it? So trans fat, we'll just run down a short list of their fun benefits. Uh, research studies have shown that fatty acids raise the level of the low-density lipoprotein that you don't want that causes heart disease. Change the way our immune system works, decreases it, decreases testosterone, increases abnormal sperm, um, interfere with pregnant, uh, pregnancy, correlates with low birth weight babies, uh, interferes with blood insulin function, hence diabetes or the function of dysfunction of uh, regulating a lot of sugar, uh, interferes with liver enzymes for detoxification. So if you like to have a little alcohol and you got tons of trans fats, it complicates your, your fun. Um, change the fluidity of the cell membrane, makes them harder. Um, that means it doesn't allow things to move in and out of them, allowing the cell to keep its health and function. Changes the way our fat cells work. It actually inhibits them from working the way you want them to work, and it would create frustration if you're ever trying to lose weight or worried about uh, joint function, worried about weight, losing weight. And lastly, it makes our plate lips more sticky. Uh, which can be a problem because our platelets can stick places they're not supposed to stick in places we don't want them to stick. So basically our bodies were never meant to develop, were never developed to metabolize scorched molecules. And that's what causes all this dysfunction in our body. Uh, functions of all the crazy little acronyms. So we've got LDL, HDL, all those little words, and we're going to turn them into English here. So the first one's a big one. It's like a chylomicron. Chylomicrons are like large moving trucks or semis hauling stuff from your diet down to your liver. In your liver, you're going to have LDL, low-density lipoprotein, and you want to make sure that number is low on your blood work. You want your low, low, and you want your high, high. That's how they named them. That's how we want them. When your high is low and your low is high, re rewind that if you need to, when your high is low and when your low is high, life is bad. So we want the low, low, and the high, high. But what LDL does is it takes cholesterol from our liver and it shoves it out to our body. And that can be good or bad depending on how our, our arterial health is, and we'll talk about that. Um, HDL, we like that. We want it high because it brings it from the body back down to the liver. And so it allows it to reprocess. So that's very good for us. That's healthy for us. Uh, for every four points, you, decre you increase your HDL. So if you go from 40 to 44, any number above that 40, it starts to decrease your risk of coronary heart disease and heart attack at 10% per four units. So by the time you get to 80, uh, statistically, you would be at a uh, very, very, very low, arguably statistically nil, chance of having a stroke or heart attack or clotted artery, or at least attributing to furthering, worsening the arteries. If you were told, I've got bad arteries, you crank up your HDL and you keep it high, and that'll keep them from getting worse and allow your body to repair those damaged areas. There's one you're not familiar with, or at least you haven't heard a lot of, called VLDL, and what that is is that's very low density lipoprotein, and what that is is it's a large, buoyant, and fluffy LDL. And the reason that's important is that when you get your LDL score, it doesn't fractionate out the difference between LDL and VLDL. It's just a cumulative number. So it's kind of misleading because you could have a high LDL, but if your VLDL is the majority portion of it, we honestly don't care for clotted arteries because they're too large, too fluffy, and too buoyant. Basically, it fit in damn it damaged artery, that damaged uh, epithelial cell wall damage. We can't fit in there and pack in there and accumulate, so it's really not part of our problem. We honestly, for the short period, don't care what our VLDL is. Um, so you might want to ask if you've got a high LDL before you start changing your whole life, what is that number? I had a triathloner who had a huge LDL number. I mean, he would measure his food, and he would fly to Hawaii and work on the triathlons, the Ironmans, and he was all nervous about all his numbers until he got correct blood assays so he could uh, comprehend that he was healthier than he thought he was, even though his initial blood report came back and just really freaked the poor guy out. Um, so that's what those cells do in their, fu their basic functions. Um, what happens, the reason we get clotted arteries is we have a, a lining like Teflon inside our arterial walls, and that's called epithelium. And that epithelium is just like Teflon. It's very uh, smooth, and it doesn't allow things to cling to it. What happens, though, when we have bad habits and we get injured is there's cracks in that endothelium, 
And if we don't have enough health, our body won't repair them correctly. And cholesterol is a great thing that the body tries to use to slap on there to prevent that damage from spreading or getting worse. So kind of like somebody takes a fork and damages your mom's Teflon pan, you don't want that to spread. You want it isolated and you want it to be minuscule. So um, that's where we start getting atherosclerosis, myocardial infractions, angina, stroke, peripheral artery disease. And the more LDL we have without the VLDL in there, the higher the risk because that's the thing that starts to accumulate at that junction of injury in our epithelium. What happens is we have these little cells in our body called macrophages. And macrophages are part of our immune system to go find garbage and remove it. Well, when they get damaged by oxidation, these macrophages change to a cell we're never born with called a foam cell. And what happens is those free radicals, those trans fats, those free radicals from smoking and drinking and, and eating junk food diets and having too high sugar levels and all the stuff we know that just rationally isn't grand for us and we watch other people do it, their health starts to decline. When we have too much of that, we get too many of these free radicals and we get too much damage to these macrophages and they become foam cells. Well, what the foam cell does is it, it no longer understands what its maximum capacity for LDL is. And when it gets too much LDL, then it goes and it starts to create these plaques. And there's a really great lecture um, by, where is it, by Tracy Fulton, PhD, biochemistry and biophysics. She's at UCFS's Osher Center for Integrative Medicine. Type in YouTube and look up the lecture called Cholesterol and Other Lipids in Your Blood, uh, Chemistry, Control, and Chaos. And it's a wonderfully overly long lecture, but she gets into the esoterics on how all of this works. So uh, a chunk of this information comes from her lecture. She's extremely intelligent and does, does a good job of breaking it down, but this is just trying to create a shorter video, so you just keep, keep with it. Um, so let's just say I've got damaged arteries and, and I, I want to change my life and I don't know what to do. Um, there's an interesting argument from a Dr. Caldwell Eccleston, a chief vascular surgeon at the world famous Cleveland Clinic, which is the number one place you go if you have a heart issue. And he has pre and post CAT scans on uh, arterial walls of them decreasing their clotting and their placking and their, their, their choking ability so you don't get the blood flow to the parts of your body you want. He can pre and post show changes. And if you want more information on what he says, there'll be another video um, that talks about how to decrease cholesterol levels. Or you can watch his movie, which is controversial, but it, it's still a movie made by medical doctors. Um, and he's not advocating drugs, interestingly, called Forks Over Knives. Um, I think it goes a little too far. I think the lifestyle is initially probably tolerable for some people, but for a long-term life commitment, I think the majority, at least my patient base, would not do it. But could we use part of that to change your life? Sure. If you just want to give us a call at toll-free 877-484-5600 and set up a consultation, we could walk you through a ton of diverse ways to help you help your own health so you can go do what you want to do when you want to do it because after all, that's what patients really want to do. Um, I wouldn't tell you to believe me. I'd tell you to go research and find out and challenge these things I'm telling you. You know, it's easier to believe what we've been taught than it is to investigate the truth. But uh, there's one more. Uh, Robert Ludwig, who is a pediatric endocrinologist at UCF, uh, UCSF, where he's the professor of clinical pediatrics and he works only with obese kids on pre and post assessment. He starts to get into statistics on his lecture called Sugar is the Bitter Truth uh, about how when we started in 1964 with the Premium study to decrease cholesterol and decrease fats and increase carbs, how we have an increased risk of heart death how we have an increased risk of cardiovascular problems, how we have an increased risk of obese and overweight people, and how we really haven't gotten any healthier, even though we ripped out basically saturated animal fat and cholesterol, because some people believe it'll kill you and you know you might as well uh, be doing crazy things. So we, we ripped out American diet. And he gets into the numbers and he gets into the health of America on what's the effect of us doing that. Um, he talks about LDL isn't what hurts us as much as it is the fructose. So it's a different, interesting argument. Uh, probably worth watching if you've got 90 minutes. Skip to the last 30 minutes. Uh, the first hour is all for medical doctors and it's biochemistry, and it's mostly boring. If you want the Cliff Note version, send me an email and I'll send you my notes on it so you can just kind of skim through and see what you want. They're a whole lot shorter than the 90 minute video. Um, make it a great day. If you've got any questions, please email office at nuca.info.